Uh, she is the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King, and she has just written a brand new uh, blockbuster book, King Rules, 10 Truths for You, Your Family, and Our Nation to Prosper. Dr. King, where may people find your book? K-I-N-G-R-U-L-E-S dot uh, kingrulesbook.com. Okay, King good. Rules, R-U-L-E-S, King Rules Book. Okay, fantastic. Kingrulesbook.com. You can go there. You can read all about it. You can see it. You can order it there. Probably pe people that are big Amazon shoppers, they can get it there as well? They can get it at Amazon, and Amazon is listed on the distributors on the website. The reason I'm encouraging people to go to King Rules Book, uh -huh. there's a wonderful photo album there. Yeah. And uh, that's the kind of thing I, I want people to know about. Yes, absolutely. And, and we urge our listeners to go there, kingrulesbook.com. Well, Dr. Mm -hmm. King, l listen, I, you, you mentioned in the very beginning about abortion and that you had had uh, a, a couple of abortions. And you, talk, you, read, you write about this in your book. I've read all of that. It's just absolutely fascinating. Also, the way that Planned Parenthood tried to hoodwink your uncle, Dr. Martin Luther King, into being a spokesperson for them. And even when he... Uh, refused, uh, they still uh, use his name and throw his name around as though he was a big proponent of Planned Parenthood. Yet you and I both know, and you write about this in your book, you and I both know that Planned Parenthood was born in abject racism, uh, y you know, with uh, Margaret Sanger, a, a, a eugenicist and a, and a racist to the core, and, and, and hated black people, wanted to, use, wanted to use Planned Parenthood as a way of exterminating the black race in America. And, and yet, um, you write on page 97 I love this paragraph says the baby inside a pregnant woman is not her body that baby <laughs> I love it that baby is see and you don't have an exclamation point I put that there <laughs> and, and you, you go on to say that baby is a distinct human being who should have all the rights that we convey on people outside of the womb the woman carrying that baby should have no more right to kill that child than she would have once the baby is born abortion is not a civil right it is the abro uh, abrogation of the civil rights of an innocent and entirely defenseless human being. In the debate over abortion, the foremost civil right is the child's. I love that. That's right. And I learned that, my, believe it or not, well, you would believe that my grandfather, Dr. Martin Luther King Sr., uh, helped my mother to make a decision for life in 1950. Of course, abortion was illegal, so mother would have had to have a procedure for a mysterious female ailment, which they would have called her DNC back there. DNC was real popular before abortion became illegal. You just go to the doctor right. and you just have a condition, mm -hmm. and they would do exploratory procedures mm -hmm. and remove anything there that could have been causing you discomfort. Right. So everything wasn't back alley. But Daddy King said to my mother, Nene, I know you want to finish school. You want to take care of your mother. But uh, I'll be better to you than any father that you've ever known. And as you and my son are married and raised your children, I'll be there. And he was always there. He kept his word. He said, you can't abort that baby. I saw her in a dream three months ago. I mean, I'm sorry, not three months, three years ago. I saw her in a dream three years ago. She has bright skin and bright red hair, and she's going to bless many people. Now, that was so prophetic because there was no ultrasound. The bright skin and bright red hair, a lot of people don't know. Daddy King's grandfather was Irish, Nathan Branham King from Ireland. And Mama King's grandfather was Willis Williams, a slave preacher that everybody, Caucasian, slave masters, slaves, everybody went to hear him preach. Wow. So you had these freedom fighters coming together in the Williams King bloodline. Wow. And then in the mid-70s, our granddaddy, I was going to abort another baby. I had had secret abortions. I let him know that year in the 70s I was going to get an abortion. He said, you can't. They're lying to you. You know, Planned Parenthood, whoever they are, Planned Parenthood, that's not a lump of flesh. That's my great-grandchild. Yeah. And so even Martin Luther King Jr. in 1966, when the Margaret Sanger had said she was still living, there was a Maggie Award. I think uh, Hillary Clinton probably received it lately. Yeah, um, she did. But, uh, right. you, you know, she said that colored people are like weeds. They need to be exterminated. Yeah. We don't want that word to get out, so let's cultivate some of their leaders. And the way they cultivate it, was by giving grants that looked like they were going to help, but they were really not, right. or awards. Right. And she awarded Martin Luther King Jr. that Planned Parenthood award, but he did not go to the ceremony. He did not accept the award. His wife, who was pro-choice, like Mrs. Barbara Bush and Laura Bush, uh, was pro-choice. The husbands, Martin Luther King, Daddy Bush, and George W. Bush were pro-life. So that's a little history right. of uh, that, those types of events.
Right, right. And and so they but but they tried uh, to use your uncle's name and mm-hmm. and and they tried to make it appear make it sound as though he was a a, a big supporter of planned parenthood. Right, and he actually was not. And I mean a man who would say injustice anywhere is threat to justice everywhere. Mm-hmm. A man who would write in, in, in a letter from Birmingham jail, don't be like the Romans who committed infanticide to their pharaoh. Right. Uh, if, in in a Christmas sermon if he would say, we have to learn to regard the human personality, and when we do that, we won't kill anyone. Right. That's, he said all those things, so that was so contrary to the agenda of death of Planned Parenthood. Right, right. And, and Planned Parenthood, they were notorious, notorious for manipulating particularly leaders in the black community, particularly pastors, because they knew if they could get to the pastors, the pastors would get to the people and give them this brainwashed idea that Planned Parenthood was a good thing, and their whole goal was to exterminate the black race. Absolutely, and but it has not been successful in that people like me, women, and men who regret lost fatherhood, we're coming forward and speaking about our own victimization, and we're getting the truth out in films like Mafia 21, Blood Money. All of these are available, uh, these types of films that can do much more, more than I did in my book. Because in my book, there is a chapter on Defend Life. There is an afterward by Father Frank Pabon, the national director of Priest for Life. But it really isn't a pro-life book. And in a way, it is. Sanctity of life from conception or fertilization until natural death for the baby's in the womb, the babies who are born, the young people, the mature people, the sick people, the elderly people. Uh, we want to care for all people, and I, I really work very hard to make those points clear in the book. Right. No, you do, you, and you do an excellent job. Dr. King, uh, sadly, we're running uh, right out of time. You've got about 45 seconds. Tell people what you'd like them to take away from this book, and again, feel free to tell them where they can get it and find out about you, but uh, leave them with a parting word. I pray that you will receive the love of God as you read the book, that the 10 steps or the 10 rules will help you. There's something there. This book was written just for you, K-I-N-G-R-U-L-E-S-B-O-O-K.com. I love everybody very much. Well, amen, Dr. King. KingRulesBook.com. Alveda King. Dr. Alveda King has been our guest. She is the author of this book. And, uh, Dr. King, we're going to have you back on Freedom Friday again. We've got so much more we could talk about right out of your book, plus your life as well. Look forward to it. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. Well, we've been honored by your presence. God bless you.